My name is Dolly by William F. Nolan. Monday. Today I met the witch, which is a good place to start this diary. I had to look up how to spell it. First I spelled it dairy, but that's a place you get milk, and from this you're going to get blood, I hope. So it is plenty different. Let me tell you about Meg. She's maybe a thousand years old, I guess. A witch can live forever, right? She's all gnarly, like the bark of an oak tree. Her skin, I mean, and she has really big eyes, like looking into deep, dark caves, and you don't know what's down there. Her nose is hooked, and she has sharp teeth like a cat's are. When she smiles, some of them are missing. Her hair is all wild and clumpy, and she smells bad. Guess she hasn't had a shower for a real long time. Wears a long black dress with holes bit in it, by rats most likely. She lives in this old, deserted, cobwebby boathouse they don't use anymore on the lake, and it's full of fat, gray rats. Meg doesn't seem to mind. My name is Dolly, short for Dorothy, like in the Oz books. Only nobody ever calls me Dorothy. I'm still a kid, and not very tall, and I've got red hair and freckles. I really hate freckles. When I was real little, I tried to rub them off, but you can't. They stick, just like tattoos do. Reason I went out to the lake to see old Meg is because of how much I hate my father. Well, he's not really my father, since I'm adopted and I don't know my real father. Maybe he's a nice man, but not like Mr. Brewbaker who adopted me. Mrs. Brewbaker died of the flu last winter, which is when Mr. Brewbaker began to molest me. I looked up the word molest, and it's the right one for what he keeps trying to do with me. When I won't let him, he gets really mad and slaps me, and I run out of the house until he's all calmed down again. Then he'll get special nice and offer me cookies with chocolate chunks in them, which are my very favorite kind. He wants me to like him so he can molest me later. Last week I heard about the witch who lives by the lake. A friend at school told me. Some of the kids used to go down there to throw rocks at her until she put a spell on Lucy Aikens and Lucy ran away and no one's seen her since. She's probably dead. The kids leave old Meg alone now. I thought maybe Meg could put a spell on Mr. Brubaker for five dollars. I saved up that much, which is why I went to see her. She said, she said she couldn't because she can't put spells on people unless she can see them up close and look in their eyes like she did to Lucy Atkins. The lake was black and smelly with big gas bubbles breaking in it and the boathouse was cold and damp and the rats scared me, but old Meg was the only way I knew to get even with Mr. Brubaker. She kept my five dollars and told me she was going into town soon and would look around for something to use against Mr. Brubaker. I promised to come see her on Friday after school. We'll have his blood, she said. Friday night. I went to see old Meg again, and she gave me the doll to take home. A real big one, as tall as I am, with freckles and red hair just like mine, and in a pretty pink dress with little black slippers with red bows on them. The doll's eyes open and close, and she was as, has a big metal key in her back where you wind her up. When you do, she opens her big dark eyes and says hello. My name is Dolly. Same as mine. I asked Meg where she found Dolly, and she said at Mr. Carter's toy store. But I've been in there lots of times, and I've never seen a doll like this for five dollars. Take her home, Meg told me, and she'll be your friend. I was real excited and ran off pulling Dolly behind me. She has a box with wheels on it. You put her inside and pull along the sidewalk. She's too big to carry. Monday. Mr. Brubaker doesn't like Dolly. He says she's damn strange. That's his words, damn strange. But she's my new friend, and I don't care what he says about her. He wouldn't let me take her to school. Saturday. I took some of Mr. Brubaker's hair to old Meg today. She asked me to cut off, cut some off while he was asleep at night, and it was really hard to do without waking him up, but I got some and gave it to her. She wanted me to bring Dolly, and I did, and Meg said that Dolly was going to be her agent. That's the word, agent. I try to get all the words right. 
Dolly had opened her deep, dark eyes and seen Mr. Brubaker, and old Meg said that was all she needed. She wrapped two of Mr. Brubaker's hair around the big metal key in Dolly's back and told me not to wind her up again until Sunday afternoon when Mr. Brubaker was home watching his sports. He always does that on Sunday. So I said, okay. Sunday night. This afternoon, like always, Mr. Brubaker was watching a sports game on the television when I set Dolly right in front of him and did just what old Meg told me to do. I wound her up with the big key and then took the key out of her back and put it in her right hand. It was long and sharp, and Dolly opened her eyes and said, Hello, my name is Dolly, and stuck the metal key in Mr. Brubaker's chest. There was a lot of blood. I told you there would be. Mr. Brubaker picked Dolly up and threw the front of her into the fire. I mean, that's how she landed, just the front of her at the edge of the fire. It's winter now, and real cold in the house without a fire. After he did that, he fell down and didn't get up. He was dead, so I called Dr. Thompson. The police came with him and rescued Dolly out of the fire when I told them what happened. Her nice red hair was mostly burnt away, and the whole left side of her face was burnt real bad, and the paint had all peeled back and blistered, and one of her arms had burnt clear off, and her pink dress was all charred colored and with big fire holes in it. The policeman arrested her said that a toy doll couldn't kill anybody and that I must have stuck the key into Mr. Brubaker's chest and blamed it on Dolly. They took me away to a home for bad children. I didn't tell anybody about old Meg. Tuesday. It is a long time later and my hair is real pretty now and my face is almost healed. The lady who runs this house says there will always be big scars on the left side of my face, but I was lucky not to lose my eye on that side. It's hard to eat and play with the other kids because just one, with just one arm, but that's okay because I can still hear Mr. Brubaker screaming and see all the blood coming out of his chest, and that's nice. I wish I could tell Old Bank thank you. I forgot to. And you should always thank people for doing nice things for you.